other people might refer to him simply as a right roll pain in the backside. But let's be honest, it doesn't really matter because whether you love or hate him, there's no denying that the rather mercurial Paul Pluter, the method actor that is Archie Luxury, remains one of the most well-known and the most maverick watch YouTubers anywhere on the earth. Now, anyone that watches my channel on a regular basis at least will know that Paul and I have had our serious differences in the past, but over the last few days, we've agreed to put those differences to one side to bring you a collaboration that aims to find out about the real Paul Pluto. Hi guys, Archie Luxury. Go to f2bbs.com www.f2bbs.com the last bastion of free speech on the interweb. That's right, guys. I want you to go to www.f2bbs.com. That's right. I want you to go there. You can, uh, this is a, a great site to fight against all sorts of nasty and nastiness by posting on f2bbs.com. The last bastion of free speech on the interweb. Go there, guys. Let's, here we go, here we go, okay. Okay, we've got Paul Thorpe, retired watch dealer, Rolex lover and aficionado, and I'm gonna ask him some questions, which um, I'm, uh, unfortunately, I'm sure I'm not gonna like the answer. Paul, I'm gonna ask you these questions pretty fast and furious. Yep, sure. So here we go. How bad is the Rolex situation in the UK, how bad is it? Um, well, if you're an average everyday buyer, Paul, it's as bad as pretty much as bad as it can get because you're not getting anything out of the ADs. Um, their philosophy of, um, you know, are you a preferred client, which really means have you are you prepared to spend a load of money with us on stuff that you don't want before? So basically, are you so, prepared to buy enough garbage that you're not going to get your money back on? Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, Paul, look, you, you might as well just save your time and go and buy it from a an independent because although you're paying over the top, at least you're probably actually paying less than you would if you go and buy a few rings and a couple of watches you don't want, etc. Um, you know, it's a, a crazy situation, Paul. Tell, tell me this. Um, what do you think the cause of this supply issue is? Is it Rolex? Is it the dealers? Is it crazy demand like the chinese are here the chinese are buying it what is it what's the cause of this well listen, i think it's a culmination of a lot of things you're right it starts off right at a very base and that is rolex and there's no one better in the world at managing their brand and rolex themselves they manage the the flow they manage the supply they manage everything superbly um in their favor and then of course the dealers the ad's in the middle between rolex and the consumer they're just as adept at, you know, making things uh, turn out in their favour. And then, of course, we've had COVID, which a lot of people feared would, you know, potentially ruin the luxury market. But it's actually had the opposite effect, Paul, because people are locked up. You know, they can't go out and eat in the restaurants. They can't mm. go on holiday. They can't do what they normally do. They can't go out browsing in the shops. So what are they doing? They're spending their money. I mean, I don't know about you, Paul, but I've not spent half in the last 12 months of what I would normally spend because I've been not doing anything. So a lot of people are yeah. turning. So supply, um, demand far outweighs supply more than ever. And of course, mm -hmm. on top of that, we talk about the UK market. We've had um, mm -hmm. the Brexit uh, completion and the VAT changes, which means even more expensive watches come in from you. It all leads to one thing and that's prices going skywards again. Yes. Tell me this, Paul. Um, so, so you, what you're saying is it, it's a it's a number of factors. It's not yeah. just it's you yeah, can't it's just a, pin it on the dealer or, 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 or Rolex. It's it's a number of, of, of factors there. Yeah, a number of factors. Yeah, I mean, what do one you or what do you recommend for a first time person? You know, like like he could be a, a man. Say he's about to hit thirty. He's married. He's got a kid. 
he's, he's got a middle class, you know, respectable yeah. money. What do you say to him? Because he can't, he says, oh, I want to get a sub. I want a sub. I'd like him. What do you say to him? What, what would well, your my, advice be to him? Well, my advice would be to him is just to say, look, you know, you've got to try and source that watch from an AD somehow because that's how you're going to get the watch at the right price. Now, that might take you a year. It might take you two years. If you're, if the finances are limited and, you know, your wife doesn't want you to spend over list, et cetera, et cetera, get on the lists. I say get on the list. It doesn't exactly work like that anymore. But, you know, try and... No. Um, chat up if you like your local authorized dealer with a nice story tell him it's you know a special occasion your 30th birthday you've always wanted a rolex you've got to find an ad worker that likes your pool um, because that basically is the bottom line it's not even necessarily how much you spend in the store it's do I they like they you? like me paul they wouldn't even <laughs> give me a bloody catalog I but they won't even let me it. in paul so join the club i can't even go in the shop so they'd ask me to leave so I've Why given away far. Well, I've given away far too many secrets, and you know, you tell the truth, Paul. And if you tell the truth, it's not always palatable for people that don't want the truth to be told. Now, I don't consider mm -hmm. that I've any. I don't, Paul. I don't consider that I've ever said anything about authorized dealers is unfair or untrue. You've never um, said anything bad. I, probably I've from said their some point of view, stuff. they would. I, I've said some <laughs> nasty stuff, and 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 I, I got to be honest with you. Um, you know, I had one dealer. Okay, so I, I bought one watch. I bought a Tudor Black Bay. Mm -hmm. And then I saw on a Facebook forum somebody, because I asked them, can I get a Tudor Pepsi, one of the, the GMT? And I saw someone on a forum who was selling it at a premium. And I went back to them and said, hey, I went back to them and said, hey, this guy's, he's blatantly stated he's selling it at cost, which included yeah. a kickback. Yeah. They turned around and tried to sue me. They threatened me with legal action. I, I, I mean, instead of yeah. saying to me, hey, what the, what's happened? Let's have a look at it. Yeah. They, they tried to sue me for defamation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're, they're, this is, this is the dealers. I told they'll always them to look after fight. their own. I told them to go and fight that thing. I told them to, to fight off. That's That's for sure. But it's... They'll always look after their own pool, you know, ultimately. I mean, whether they would uh, chastise that dealer privately, um, you know, who knows. But ultimately, publicly, they'll always defend each other. Tell me this, Paul. Well, look, look I want to ask you this. When is this situation going to get better? When is it going to get better? How long is a piece of string? I mean, ultimately, until we come out of the lockdown, I mean, coming out of lockdown, I think, would help to a degree because people would find other things to focus on and spend their money on potentially. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know what's happening with the proposed price increase in the UK, and that's been, from my understanding, it's being rethought by Rolex because of the change in the import um, fees for, for UK dealers, etc. I, I don't really see it becoming easier, Paul. I think Rolex are on a on a mission, a very clever mission. I mean, look what they've done in the last couple of years. I mean, that Oyster Perpetual 41 range, what mm -hmm. a absolute masterstroke. Look, whether you like the watches or not, it doesn't matter. You have to admire their marketing prowess. And, and the Oyster what, Perpetuals were always soft, weren't they? Exactly, and now look at them. I mean, Paul, they're changing hands for like 10 grand, some of them in the UK. It's absolutely bizarre. Um, now, will that last? I don't know, but some of them colours, mark my words, Paul, what they'll do with that watch is that they'll remove one or two of those colours. It will be like the Panini football stickers when you was a kid. You know, I want the Tiffany Blue. Well, the Tiffany Blue's now been discontinued. The Tiffany Blue is now 15 grand if you want it. You know, and they, 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 may, they may introduce a purple or a, a plum colour or something, something else into the range and it's a, it's a, a monumentally clever um way of doing business and you, you know like them or love them you got to admire them tell me this do you think this strategy they're pursuing is going to hurt them in the long run because possibly for, possibly for, i see more hate for rolex is, now you got newbies like like we're talking mr 28 mm. to 32 he wants to buy his first, he wants a Rolex, he wants a Rolex, and he's not going to be able to get anything, right? So, but 
is this going to affect them later? He, he'll go in, I, I don't know, you tell me. It's a great question, Paul, but consider this. And as a watch retailer of many years, I've seen this a thousand times. Young men, and when we say young men, let's talk 25 to 35. Sure. Young men, especially if they're single, will forsake almost anything to get what they want in many respects. Now, we're not talking Ferrari money here. We are talking money that potentially you could borrow, you could loan, you know, you could potentially save for a still sure. sporty, etc. They, you know, I used to have people in my shop and they come in and their kids would be badly dressed. You know, they, they look, it will be an exaggeration to say they looked hungry, but they need a new pair of shoes, Paul, right? You know, and the old man's buying a Rolex and I'm thinking, don't you think you should be sorting out your kids' shoes before you buy yourself a Rolex? Don't underestimate the selfish nature of men. So will it do them harm in the long term? I'm not sure that it will because human nature will probably always dictate to the fact that they'll always have a customer, mate. They'll always have a customer. Do you think there's anything Rolex could do to solve this situation by saying, okay, you have an application process or something m more concrete than what we've got here. Do you think they would ever do anything to, to add some fairness into this? Well, I don't think Rolex Geneva are looking for fairness at the moment. Having said that, Paul, it's a good question because, you know, I've suggested in the past that for me, the way out of it, and that the, the issue is, is the flippers. Let, let's get this right. The flippers are a big part of this problem because it's very hard. And it's understandable, Paul, that if you walk into a store today with no intention of flipping that watch, you buy, let's say you buy a stainless steel Daytona, and then you walk yeah. out of the store, you look at it and you think, Do you know what, I love it, but... I think I'd love 100% profit even more. You know, so it, it's hard. You can't <clears throat> necessarily blame the individuals because a profit is in a human a human's nature. But I've suggested yeah. that instead of instead of um, retaining people's warranty cards and all this nonsense, that if you're prepared to pay for a watch up front 12 months, um, uh, and you can be guaranteed that watch after that 12 month period, then that stops the flippers because flippers work from hand to mouth. They work from one watch, maybe two, to another. They haven't got the money to tie up for 12 months. Oh, I, that's an interesting, very interesting. So if I was the AD, you come to yeah. me as, and I'm your AD and you say, Paul, yeah. I want a, a one, two sub. And I say, mm -hmm. okay, Paul, look, mm -hmm. Pay for that watch now up front, and I promise you that on the same date this time next year, or within a week I have a side or whatever, um, you will that watch will be available to you and be delivered. You pay for that watch. You know you're getting it in a year, but you ain't gonna be prepared to lay that money out as a flipper because you need to turn yeah. it over. Tell me this, Paul. Would you still <laughs> recommend Rolex? To yeah. a friend who said, I'm thinking about getting a good watch. Would you still recommend Rolex with all this bullshit that comes associated with it? Paul, I've got to be frank with you, mate, and probably say it's really the only watch, the only brand I'd actually recommend to someone in many respects because mm -hmm. it, it depends on how they come to me, Paul. If they come to me and say, look, I don't care about the money. Yes. Like, you know, look, I've bought Hublot in the past. I've bought APs that I know I'm going to lose money on it's because I didn't care about what it was, the retention value. They're watches that I wanted from the heart. But the vast majority of buyers want a watch from the heart and they say they don't care. You know, a lot of people say, oh, why do you always talk about value retention? Well, that's fine, but wait until the time comes to sell it. They always care about value retention when they're standing in front of a dealer and the dealer's offering them a third of what they paid, then they suddenly care about value retention. So I would say, look, you know, and it does happen. A lot of friends come to me and say, Paul, I want to buy a watch. I've got X amount to spend. What do you recommend? And 99 times out of 100, I'm recommending Rolex. Sometimes I might recommend that they have a little look at the Amiga brand or Tudor. I think Tudor are producing a yeah. great range of watches. But yes. it, it is still I, I really loved your video you did, Paul. You're talking about the 69173. That's the ladies' two tone bread and butter. You, they, yeah. They, I, I think my wife has had about 10 of them. Flyers, okay, the six, yeah. 69174s. They're just yeah. waterproof. Yeah. 
the, the problem is they're no longer, they used to be like, like £2,000 got you an, a reasonably nice one. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, now, now they've, they've um, I, I, I've got to be honest with you, I, I think my, my dad has got a 16234. And uh, I mean, that's a, you know, for, for an elderly gent, that's a fantastic. Yeah, nice classy, watch. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a Mercedes, C class Mercedes yeah, yeah. watches, really. You, nice you, stainless steel day just, yeah. It just, just, just in it. The problem is, they're not even available now. They're no, not I even mean. Available. Not at all, Paul. I mean, the 69173, the classic ladies, still in gold Rolex yeah. Datejust. I, yeah. It wasn't so long ago that I was paying, you know, 1600 for those trade and selling them for 2100 Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But they've gone past that now. You know, they're, they're, they're long past that now. So, but I mean, these watches, you know, I said in the video, these are watches that were produced in a heyday, you know. I mean, Paul, the world was going through a lot of different changes in the, in the, in the, uh, in the yeah. 80s. And, a lot of people have money in 1987 in particular i said it our age you know there's thousands and hundreds of thousands of our serial date just around they made yeah. more in 87 i think than they've ever done in there in any other year actually 87 i think that's when they went to sapphire as well on the date 87 just, we were in the transition pool so they're mm. sat uh, they're, they're still acrylic then but there's almost a 10-year yeah. transition from the one end of the 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 the, the range to line up to the, to the other. So 87 was still 16013, then it went over to uh, mm -hmm. 16233. Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah. Sapphire. Yeah. Yes. I thought the Sapphire was a big improvement there. That was a, it was a, a nice, nice thing to have there. Yeah, it brought it's, the watch um, into a different era, didn't it? I mean, the uh, at one stage, everyone, you know, I still have a big soft spot for the old 16013. Um, you know, if you can buy a nice condition yeah. classic model, that's, that's the plastic quick set. Plastic yeah. quick sets. They're they, they were, they were gorgeous. They nice, watches. Yeah. They, they, they are. Unfortunately, a lot of them have been over polished now, and they're kind of a little bit. Yeah. You know, they, they, they've gone a little bit that way there, but. Yeah, a lot of them have been played around with, and I said in the video, Paul. You know, they are one of the watches that is one of the most heavily customized watches in the world. The one six zero one three. So you always have to be a little bit careful about what you're buying. Final question, Paul. Final question. Sure. If you had to pick, now I'm not saying to you, this is the criteria. This has got to be either a steel, a two tone, a watch for you, and also for your missus to live with forever. If you could own, this is it. This is it, Paul. Your last and final. What would you pick? What would you pick? Is there a budget, Paul? No budget, but I mean, no I mean, I mean, steel or two tone. So no platinum no or, or ridiculous okay. rainbow dial. You know, nothing stupid. And 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 be honest with you, I think you get sick of that anyhow. You want something yeah. that you just use. Yeah. Well, if what it would was you pick for yourself, probably I would stick with my James Cameron uh, deep sea sea dweller. That would be my yes. watch for life. And, and for her indoors. Do you know what? Right now, today, I'd buy a, an Oyster Perpetual 41 with the Tiffany Blue Doll. Ah, good choice. Usable. And I th yeah. Beautiful. And I think I think when we got when we're holding hands, I've got the the dark blue ah, fading into the the black, and she's got the light blue. I just think it would look really, really classy. That's. If I think that's a nice pair. It, it, if only you could get the Oyster Perpetual at retail. Be nice, wouldn't it? That's, that's it will be exactly lovely. It. it will be lovely. Thank you, Paul. On that note there, we'll end this interview. Thank you my so much for um, for coming on. And uh, I wish you all the best with your, your channel there. And um, thank you. I hope to do more videos with you, Paul. Thank and, you. I'd just like to say hello to all my Australian viewers as well, Paul, because I very much, I never actually mention them very often, but they're third on my list. So UK, obviously, number one, US and then Australia. Yes. So thanks to all you guys out there for watching. I've, I've got a lot of friends here. They, they actually, they, they uh, no nonsense. They all mention Paul. I said, oh, I like, I like his, I like his video. He's a bit wrong on this, but I like this. I like that video. I used to love the ones in the car you did. Yeah. You had the smart, I think you had. You yeah, had yeah. I'm still driving around in that pool, staying incognito. So. Yeah, yeah, no, that's 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 the way it goes, Paul. So um thank you so much. I'm just gonna end that there, just stay on there, and uh, we'll see you next time. Paul, just hang on.
Hi guys, Archie Luxury, and who do I recommend in America? In America, who do I recommend for quality pre-owned wristwatches? David SW, David SW, David SW. Go to davidsw.com. He is the best, the greatest pre-owned dealer in all of the United States of America. David SW, David SW, David SW. Hey guys, Archie Luxury, who do I recommend for watches in Brisbane and Sydney? Vintage Watch Co, that's correct. Vintage Watch Co in Brisbane Arcade in Brisbane and the Strand Arcade in Sydney. Vintage Watch Co, Brisbane and Sydney. Ronnie, I've known him since the late 90s. Ronnie is a top bloke. Luke is a great guy. Vintage Watch Co. That is who I recommend in Australia. Check out Vintage Watch Co. and the guys. Amazing range of watches. They also do service and repairs. Vintage Watch Co. That is where the pontiff goes. You know, some of my paddocks came from Vintage Watch Co. That's right, guys. Vintage Watch Co.